The first thing you're doing, yes, is defining distance. The second thing you're doing is actually establishing control, putting yourself in a position where you're not committing two hands but one, because the one hand is back, the lead hand is forward. So if someone grabs that, you can replace and punch, and you can drive forward very, very quickly. The Winch and Guard hands refer to as Munsell. There's two interpretations of Munsell, asking hand or inquisitive hand. What we're going to start with is we'll start quite simply with the first basis, which is asking. Simply by placing my hand forward, what I'm doing is I'm putting my partner in a tempting position. I'm tempting them to attack me because I'm placing my hands forward. In doing so, I'm doing a number of things. I'm covering the centre line, I'm establishing distance, I'm establishing control. I'm keeping myself relatively square, so it's very difficult for the person, if I stand sideways, it's quite easy for them to slip behind me. But if I stay square and he moves to the side, it's very difficult for him to follow, because I, to, for him to move, because I can follow him. So initially, when we're facing off in a winch and guard, we have our leg forward, we have our hands forward, and we keep our hands relatively close. If he tries to move forward, it's very difficult because I can keep my hands and keep and maintain that distance and that control. The most important thing, and this is the interesting thing about the guard hand, for a beginner in Wing Chun, it's quite easy to understand and learn and develop distance judgment. For an avid boxer, they have to develop distance judgment by throwing punches and pulling their hands back. They have to use their eyes. Their eyes basically tell them where and allow them to adjust and adapt to distance. For a Wing Chun beginner, as opposed to a boxer who's beginning boxing or starting boxing, he actually learns to judge distance from the length of his arms. The length of his arms is a physical indicator. It's, it's like, it's like a, a ruler. It's a good physical indicator of distance. My partner moves into me and he steps forward. If I move back in a passive manner and I keep my arms short, I ruin my distance. For a beginner, they understand that my distance is compromised because my arm shape is compromised. It's bent. If Nick reaches over and grabs my throat, okay, or my head, it's quite easy for him to compromise my shape and crush me and make it quite awkward for me. So, first of all, what the Wing Chun student learns to do is to express their arms, to keep it forward. The easiest way of thinking is to keep it long, keep it forward, almost as if you're striking to the eyes, but you must keep it forward. The idea being if Nick tries to grab hold of me, it's very difficult if you try and grab hold of my head or, or throat, Nick. It's really difficult for him to do so because my hands are in the way. So with my hands forward, it's quite easy for me to judge distance. We've already established that. But at the same time, what I'm doing is protect myself and protect my personal space and I'm making it very awkward for this person to, to drive forward. What I can also do is put myself in a better position to punch. So because I have my hand forward, if he punches, I can strike. If he moves, I can strike. I already have my hand forward in an ability, in a range, in an area to strike and move. Unlike short guards where you keep your hands back, what we tend to do, and this is the logic of, of keeping Munsell forward, is that we don't put two hands forward. If we put two hands forward, it compromises our shape because he can pull both arms and makes it really difficult for me to respond. So what I do is I put one hand forward and I keep the other hand back, I keep it short. If he pulls one hand, I've always got an option to use the rear hand. If he pulls it down, I can punch him. If he pulls it down, I can punch him. If he pulls it down, I can chop. Pulls it down, I can side punch, pulls it down, I can strike to the eyes. I've got an option to do that because I have a safety mechanism. Which is one of the points I covered earlier when I discussed the guard hand as not pose, but as an actual mechanism. It's an actual live, living thing that you actually use, respond and feel with. What you don't do is stand there and pose with the shape. So in this case, if my hand's forward, if someone rushes into me, I can change the shape by pulling the hand forward and punching with the rear hand. So it's live, it's not static. If it's static and it's just solid and it's there, it's quite easy for someone to move around, bang, and punch in, and hit around the shape. So the Wing Chun Guard is a physical, moving, living thing, just like you, just like you. You move, you feel, you respond, and that's what you do with your hands. If someone throws a punch, you feel it. If someone moves, you follow. But what you don't do is just stand there in a static pose. So the first thing you're doing, yes, is defining distance. The second thing you're doing is actually establishing control, 
putting yourself in a position where you're not committing two hands but one, because the one hand is back, the lead hand is forward. So if someone grabs that, you can replace some punch, and you can drive forward very, very quickly.